What's up, y'all? So last night I stunned all hoes and I felt like it was important to just come back and remind y'all bitches regular. Uh, so, <laughs> um, this What's Up, y'all, has been on my brain for a minute now and I keep forgetting to write about it. And so I mean to uh, do a video about it. So I'm going to do a video now. I mean, the first one I did was long, so I'm going to try to truncate my message and give you a shorter version. So this video is about the ways in which colonization is an everyday act that lives inside of white people um, and lives inside of all of us. Let me be clear that I think there are ways in which we have all been indoctrinated um, into uh, the systems of colonization and to enact those in spaces, um, any spaces where we feel or have been conditioned to perceive ourselves as dominant. Um, very specifically, of course, that shows up for white people in response to all bodies of color, very specifically black bodies and indigenous bodies. Um, and any, yeah, just any bodies that have, um, um, that throughout history have been deemed uh, less than the white body, right? But I also want to be clear that able-bodied people do this shit to privileged folk, I mean, to disabled folks um, that... Um, and colonize, act in colonizing ways um, against the bodies of disabled folks, that thin folks act in colonizing ways against the bodies of fat folks, um, you know, the straight bodies and cis bodies act in colonizing ways against the bodies of queer and trans folks. Um, yeah, so I wanted to make that part clear. But one of the things that I think the purpose of me sharing this message right now is again, like I'm never, ever, ever inspired by people who are like, Oh my God, I would never do that. Shut up. Yes, you do. Um, and you do because you grew up in the same society I did. And so you do the same things that we've all been indoctrinated to do. You're not a special snowflake. Um, and what's actually inspiring to me are the folks who are like, yep, totally every day looking for the ways in which that shows up in me so that I can intentionally dismantle it. That's what's inspiring. And all that other stuff is just privilege comforting. Um, so here are the three examples that happened to me in the literally in the last three weeks. Um, these examples of like real time uh, individual level colonization <laughs> went down in my life. So the first one was I'm at the grocery store and these are all experiences with white folks. Um, I'm at a grocery store and um, I'm in the frozen fruit department. And this older white woman is like, oh, I like that and reaches and touches me. I had on a head wrap and headphones and I wasn't sure she's talking about my headphones or she was, I think she was talking about my head wrap though. Um, I feel pretty certain. And I, it was so stunning that I didn't even have a chance really to respond. I was like, what the fuck? But here's what that is about that I've gotten, right? Is that like, and I too have touched people. Like oftentimes I've put my hand on someone to say, excuse me, as I, as I know that I'm going to physically touch them to move past them um, and things like that. But I'm trying to be more and more mindful every single day about the ways in which um, I am invading somebody's space with my body without their consent. Um, but what's specific about this kind of touch and the touch that involves like walking up and touching somebody's hair uh, and that type of shit or touching something that you say you like on someone, right, is, it, is that it says that my experience of liking and wanting to experience the thing I like, I value more than your autonomy. I value more than your personal sovereignty. And so I will touch you at will because... I, what's most important right now is me and this experience that I want to have. Um, and that is a subconscious thing that we do to people who we have been taught to devalue as not as important in the world. Um, not as important as us, right? Um, there is small cues that each of us every single day process that says this body is more important than this body. And so when we reach and touch the thing that we like, right? Because you don't just walk into you know, let's say, uh, you know, a diamond store and touch the diamonds, right? In general, you are clear that you're not supposed to touch those. And when you do touch them, right, it's because you haven't necessarily been given um, the socialization that that thing is important and you should ask permission, right? 
<laughs> like that's a that's a message that we're taught. And so when people touch the bodies of people of color without their permission, it is because they haven't been given the message that those bodies are um, important and sovereign. And so consequently, we should not just have access to them. So that was experience number one. Experience number two, my homegirl Jasmine, who is traveling in the far north of Aotearoa right now, but has been here visiting um, with me. We were out to eat at a restaurant and we're sitting at a table. There were three chairs at the table. Um, a group of older white folks were sitting at the table beside us. An old white man gets up and just takes the chair from our table and goes back and gives it to the woman. Um, who had just come to his table. He never looked at us. He never made any co eye contact. He never said anything to the two humans sitting at the table that he just walked up on and took some shit from. <laughs> and it was mind boggling to me. At first I was just like, what? Like, where do they do that? Uh, and what I got was like, oh, <laughs> all over the world, Sonia, that's where they do that. <laughs> Like this small moment of everything in here is mine and is certainly anything that belonged to you black girls is mine. And I don't even have to acknowledge you in order to have access to it. Um, and as we were sitting there, I could feel myself welling up. I was totes about to cast him out. It, like I get to a place where um, I can feel the energy has to come out of me. Um, and I'm not, maybe I might not cut you out, but you'll get addressed. In, in a real nice, stern way that I address. Um, and but I also didn't want to, to just like have my whole meal fucked up by cussing out this white guy or telling him off or kindly inf or taking up my energy with informing him about shit. And so I didn't say anything, but uh, Jasmine reminded me that like in those moments, your throat chakra gets activated and you need to vocalize it. So I was in the restaurant like, <laughs> like just trying to move the energy out and I am certain that he felt that energy and felt the animosity coming from our table and got up and said I mean this is a cool 20 minutes later maybe uh maybe not 20 maybe 10 minutes later 10 to 15 oh I'm sorry ladies I realized I didn't even ask you if you had someone coming and it was like we were just like mm-hmm mm Right. But what was fascinating was like, it didn't matter that whether or not we had someone coming. What mattered was that you came into our space, right? With a need that you made and made your need more important than us, our space, our autonomy, and didn't even feel the need to treat us as human in your engagement. And then the last one, the one I think I was actually the most offended by, and I was real offended by the chair shit. Um, we have a property manager, um, that handles our account for the home we live in. And we've had issues with this person before, but we'd never met them in person. So this person shows up to do an inspection in New Zealand. They inspect your house every three months if you're renting, um, which I find utterly offensive and probably means I'm going to buy a house. Uh, but anyway, this was the first inspection since we moved in and we're showing, um, this person around and we take them into the pool house, which is where Jasmine has been staying. Um, and they have their shoes off. We take, Shoe, you don't wear shoes in the house in New Zealand. And Jasmine had three stones on the floor near the window, um, which were very clearly gemstones, very clearly, you know, sacred or special or something. And this woman is like, oh, um, what are those? What are, wait, wait, so you can get it the way I'm trying to give it to you. Ooh, what, what, are, what are those? What's those? I don't know if you got my toe situation. Takes her toe and puts it on Jasmine's gemstones. And I, I, I was at a loss for words. And I, and, and it was a moment where I really wished that I could have cussed this person out. And I feel like I should have. And I didn't. Um, one, because I was so taken aback. And Jasmine didn't say anything because, you know, she's like, I don't want to fuck up Sonya housing shit. It was fucked up. And it was one of those moments where it was just like, I can't think of a context in which someone will walk, where I would walk into anybody's house and put my toes on anything, on anything other than their floor, right? But like to use my toe to touch something. Um, and I couldn't think of a context in which this blonde white woman would walk into a wealthy white man's home and put her toes on 
his things. Um, and it got very clear that it was just like, oh, like that's the kind of informality that people treat you with when they're indifferent to your person and anything affiliated with your person. Like, clearly there's a level of hierarchy that she experiences that means that she has access in the most disrespectful of ways to whatever the fuck is in this space. And it was mind boggling. Um, but it's so clear that like, again, that's what, that is what, we do when we when we're taught not to value something, right? Like, and so I think what I really am just sitting with, and this is actually no shorter than the video I did before, which is that you know what I want folks to get is that it's a violence, that it's an act of violence. It is an act of violence to um, reach into someone's space and touch them without consent. It is an act of violence to. Um, make invisible the presence of someone else so that you can get your needs, whatever those needs might be, regardless of another human being in their presence there. And it is an act of violence to treat informally um, people of color because, you know, they just don't matter to you. Like one of the things that I think is a, 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 a tiny erosive violence is when people talk to you and... Um, People who don't know you talk to you in what they consider vernacular. Um, it's so disrespectful. It's such a violence. You're, hey girls, and oh, I heard that, and whatever the fuck other horrible ass misuses of urban slang it is that you are engaging with black folks and people of color with very specific, and oftentimes it's such a violent form of anti-blackness. And I see all kinds of people of color doing this to black folks all the time. And what it is, is it says, I don't respect you as, um, as, 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 as a person that I don't know who I need to engage with on a certain formal level because um, I don't know you yet, right? Like there's a level of formality that we treat with, we treat strangers with just from the virtue of the sheer respect of, I don't know you to be um, informal with you. But if you only see people as informal, right? If you only see black people as, you know, some informal ass people, then you will engage with them, not from, like you would engage with them not from a space of, oh, I actually have to build a relationship with this person before I talk relationally to them. You would not go into your boss's office, people with any, with appropriate sort of, you know, developed social skills, right? Who actually understand social nuance would never go into um, a job interview and like dap up the, the boss and just be like, yeah, like, you know, tell asking personal questions and right. There's a level of formality that you engage with that person in that says, Oh, there's an expectation that actually relationship has to be built. Not that I just have access to it, but when you see yourself as just having access to someone because they're not actually valuable, right. Or valued, um, by society, then you treat them informally, right. The same way we treat things informally that have less value, whatever we are connotating that as to then things we see to have more value. Um, so I just want y'all to know that that's violent. It's fucked up. Stop doing that shit. Um, and again, don't look for the ways in which that's not true for you. Look for the ways in which you do it. That's the transformative radical action is to find it in yourself and root it out. Um, if you don't look for it, you won't find it. So if you start from, of course, I would never do that. Then guess what? You just have some default shit running that's violent and harming people. Stop doing that shit. Look for it. I invite you to do that. I do not invite you to invade my space, to... Um, lessen my personal sovereignty or the value of my property or put your nasty ass toes on shit.